Hello everyone and welcome to today's enclosure tour which features my tomato frog Gamakichi but Gamakichi is actually buried in the substrate so you're not going to see him in this tour I'll just post some clips of him later eating just so you guys can see him um, he's actually been in this enclosure for a few days now I decided to wait to film it just for whatever reason there was actually no reason it just so happened that I could film it today um, so there wasn't like an introduction to it and it's not really that exciting when you introduce a tomato frog to their enclosure because they just run to the first place they can hide which is understandable so this is an 18 by 18 12 exoterra it features bioactive soil but it's not the same type of bioactive that have been featured in my other videos and I'll explain that in a second it also features a stream area that has some bamboo in it it features a foam background that has some driftwood attached to it so it looks like it's just all part of the same piece it has two uh, planting pots which I'll get to later as well and then it has this little hide right here in the front so let's go ahead and get started with a closer look we'll start over in the stream section actually no we'll start with the soil so the soil is a mix between a bunch of things there's some eco earth there's some organic topsoil there's some of the terra firma from the bio dude there's leaf litter there's sphagnum moss there's a bunch of stuff in here and I just really like having a mix of soils because I don't like just using eco earth so that's why I decided to mix them and it just I don't know I much prefer it to just using eco earth or just using eco earth and sphagnum moss so the purpose of the leaf litter is not only like for aesthetics and for enrichment but also because leaf litter as it breaks down provides some food for the cleanup crew and it also provides hide for the cleanup crew the cleanup crew in this enclosure are springtails and dwarf white tropical isopods i am definitely going to be adding more isopods to my other enclosures however i will only be keeping dwarf white tropical isopods in this one because if i get larger isopods gamakichi might try to eat them and then he would also ingest a lot of substrate. This is a problem that Chocho -Cho had with her former owner, so that's why I'm gonna avoid using the other isopods for her and for Gamakichi. Oh, speaking of Chocho, -Cho, her video will be up after Gamakichi's, so make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you know when her video gets posted. And another note, a lot of this stuff came from Josh's Frogs, which is a website that you can go to to find all types of stuff to build bioactive enclosures. So if you're interested in buying anything from Josh's Frogs, from feeders to stuff to build enclosures, or actually to buy enclosures themselves because I bought this enclosure from Josh's Frogs, what you can do is use code JESSICA15. I'll include all that you need to know in the links down below. And when you use that code, you get 15% off whatever you're buying, which is great. So the element that makes this soil bioactive is the fact that it has a cleanup crew. Other than that, there are no live plants in this part of the enclosure. And also this enclosure does not have a drainage layer it is strictly just the aforementioned soils sphagnum moss and leaf litter all mixed together and there's multiple inches of it it goes from the bottom of the enclosure all the way up to the door so I tried to keep plants in the actual like ground space and uh, they died so had to go the route of potted plants which are right up here so there's a potted philodendron up here and another philodendron up here. Why did I use two of the same plants? Because I like consistency. I like the way that they look, the way that they match the bamboo, and I was like, this is what I'm doing. I'll include their species name in, down below where I also include the Josh's Frogs information. And then also I just have some bamboo over here in the stream section. The bamboo is just lucky bamboo. So how did I create the pots to put the um, philodendron in? Basically, I took the expanding foam and I sprayed it over top of a cup that had the bottom cut out. Now, because there's nothing underneath of the cups, like it goes right to water, I took a little layer of mesh and I siliconed it in place on the bottom of the cup. So that soil will still be kept in the cup, like soil wouldn't just fall through right into the water section, but it also still allowed for ample drainage. So that's why I did that. So there's one on each side. There's one here and there's one over there. The purpose of having two is for symmetry. You could have one if you wanted to. Wait till we get to Chocho's enclosure and you'll see what she did with hers, but I'm very fortunate that Gamakichi hasn't done this. Just wait, it's, it's hysterical. You just have to see. So over here is a piece of Fluker's Driftwood. It's actually something I bought like a long time ago when I got a bunch of Fluker's Driftwood. It first started out that the Driftwood that I got was all like really boring it looked like firewood there was absolutely nothing to it um, i think they had one good piece out of the four i ordered 
And so I just left, not a complaint, but I left, like, um, a review that said, you know, just be aware that if you're looking for, like, a really unique piece, you might get it on the first try, but not on the second try. And then they actually sent me more pieces for free, which I thought was amazing. And those pieces were pretty cool. So this was one of those extra pieces. And I took the expanding foam and I merged it into the background. So it's like solid in place, like it's not going anywhere. And I just like that better because it just makes the background look cooler. I originally just had a background in here that was like a flat 3D background. It was a, like a, a cork tile background. And like while that looks fine for some people and it looked fine for me, I decided I didn't like it as much and I wanted to have a cooler looking background. So I just kept that one in place and then I sprayed expanding foam all over it and then carved it and made sure that the planning cups were covered and the driftwood was covered so that everything stayed in place. And I just really like how it turned out. I also like how it covers the stream area. So over here, there's like a section where if Gamakichi wanted to be covered in his stream area, he could, which I really liked because in Chocho's enclosure, whenever she was in her stream area, she was always like squeezing herself down into the rocks in the far back, like just trying to be away, <laughs> just trying to be covered. So I thought I would create like a little corner, a little nook where they could hide. So. The last thing in Gamakichi's enclosure is this little boring Habba hut right here in the front. There's nothing spectacular about it, it's just a little log hide, Habba hut, whatever. One last thing I actually forgot to talk about was the stream area, which is like something that is more complicated than anything else in this enclosure. So this stream area was originally created when the tank was completely empty, there was no substrate, no background, nothing. So I took aquarium safe silicone and I took some pieces of acrylic that I had left over from like some gecko bookshelf builds and I decided to just make a little rectangle in the enclosure as you can see a rectangle goes all the way back to that wall and then comes over here so it makes a rectangle after I put the acrylic in place and sealed it with the silicone on both sides and all the corners and everything to make sure it would be strong then I let it cure for two days and then I tested it to see if it would hold water and fortunately on the first try it held water and then I added in these large rocks that are, I think are called turtle, turtle rocks. I think they're by Imaginatarium or something like that from Petco. I wanted rocks that are big enough that they wouldn't move if the frogs were being really rambunctious and that they would be large enough that they couldn't be accidentally swallowed or eaten. Um, cause obviously I don't want my frogs to die of impaction by tiny rocks. That sounds horrible. So I wanted really big ones and fortunately not only did these go well with like the warm earth tones of the enclosure, but they also were large enough, so it was perfect. I have them in Choto's enclosure, and I have them in Fugaku's stream area, and I have them in my Tiger Salamander stream area as well. There's also a filter in the stream area I forgot to mention. It is a, uh, it's advertised as a turtle filter, but I would never use it for turtles. It's so small, it's like the size of my palm maybe a little bit bigger and it like doesn't put out that much force as you can see like it's pretty slow moving um it's perfect for what i'm using it for but i wouldn't use it for anything like larger i think it's by zoomed and then we have the philodendron in its little planting pot over there we have the really awesome background and another philodendron and then the background kind of like comes up on this wall over here too so make sure it can hold the driftwood in place and there's the driftwood and there it is held over there and then up here we have the uh hide and then like i said stream area substrate so that's it it's a pretty simple enclosure but i like to think of it as like an elegant simple because a lot of times when you'll see like tomato frogs pac-man frogs cho uh chocho frogs yeah chubby frogs when you see frogs that are like considered like more not active or like a burrowing only type of frog they'll just like throw substrate and a fake plant in there and call it a day um that obviously works just fine but i think that this is not only more enriching but it's also more fun for me to look at and i've actually seen my tomato frog gamakichi one he's very active in his stream area and he likes to croak from it which is so cute two he loves to climb he like is actually a climber like i'm not lying to you he will climb given the opportunity in fact in his quarantine enclosure he climbed all the way to the top on like the second day he was here so if you give your pac-man frog chubby frog tomato frog whatever if you give one of your frogs the ability to actually utilize the space in their enclosure um like an active stream area that has like 
running water <laughs> or if you give them like a really intricate background they can climb or if you give them some driftwood to climb on or even if you just give them substrate that's mixed and it's not just eco earth and it has different textures and it has a cleanup crew like all of that comes into creating a really enriching enclosure that is going to be beneficial to them and beneficial to you so anyways I'm going to include some clips of my tomato frog here just so you guys can get a little taste of what he's like. He's absolutely lovely, um, but he's also always angry at me, so that's great. <laughs> he's so cute. Okay, I'll come back in a second and give the outro. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing my tomato frogs updated bioactive. I also hope you enjoyed seeing Gamakichi eating and being like very rambunctious as he is. He's so boisterous. He always puffs himself up and he's just very moody. I love it. If you haven't already, please leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave any questions or concerns you have down below. And with that, I will see you in Chocho's video. Actually, like, I'm gonna go film it right now, but I'll see you guys in like a day or two. Bye.